This resource is the first in a four-part series on graphing trigonometric functions. Part 1 looks at the graphs of the two fundamental trigonometric functions, sine and cosine. Part 2 considers the various features of the sine and cosine graphs. These features are defined and methods for finding each are presented with an example. Part 3 suggests using the features of the general sine or cosine as stepping stones for graphing a general trigonometric function. Part 4 looks at the graphs of the other four trigonometric functions, formed from ratios involving sine and or cosine. Before we look at the actual graphs for sine and cosine, let's take a moment to describe our general process. Although they are a special form, trigonometric functions are still functions. We will use the general process for graphing any function. That is, we will create a table of values. First, we select some special values for the independent variable, which is x. We then find the function value for each of those values of x. This provides us with the coordinates for a number of points on the graph, which we then plot. We finish by connecting the points and labeling our graph. So let's look at the graph of the sine function. Although we are graphing sine on the normal xy plane, we need to remember that the inputs for trigonometric functions are actually angles. To compensate for this, we will use radian measures for the x values, as radians are real number representations for angle measures. Since we are graphing sine, we choose angles that have 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians as their reference angle. We also include the radian measures for 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees, or 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, respectively. Now we need to find the value of sine for each of these radian measures. Because we selected very particular values for x, we have quote unquote nice values for y. 0, 1 half, 1, negative 1 half, and negative 1. We plot each of these points. And we connect the points. Note that our graph starts and ends at y values of 0. Also, we only went through one complete cycle of values for the graph. Sine curves and all the other trigonometric functions are periodic, which means that the pattern continues. Now let's look at cosine. We start by selecting appropriate x values. To ensure the nice function values, for cosine we use angles whose reference angle is 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians, as well as the quadrantal angles of 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. We find our y values. Again, we have quote unquote nice values for y. 0, 1 half, 1, negative 1 half, and negative 1. We plot the points. We finish by connecting the points. Note the cosine graph starts and ends at the maximum value. Just like sine, this pattern would repeat if we extend the graph past 2 pi. Now that we have seen the basic graphs, let's see if we can generalize and find the features of these trigonometric functions. Stay tuned for part 2 of the series.